Welcome to today's core coffee chat on coordinating referrals through the Unite Us platform. We're pleased to be joined today by our guest, Ellen Dektar, who's the Senior Community Engagement Manager with Unite Us, and Dr. Heather Thompson, who's the Program Manager at the Health Improvement Partnership, or commonly known as HIP. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of the local consultants with my colleague, Nicole Young, who facilitate a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or core investments. <clears throat> core is a collective impact approach to achieving equitable health and well being for all people across the lifespan in Santa Cruz County. And as you're hearing, our core events are held bilingually in English with Spanish trans inter interpretation and translation, thanks to our team members, Stella Lauerman, who's interpreting right now, and Gisela Carrasco, who translates comments and questions in the chat. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to Nicole Young, who will walk us through some overviews of CORE. Great, thanks, Nicole. So as Nicole mentioned a moment ago, CORE stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments, and we call it a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. And there are a lot of uh, pieces in there to unpack. And over the next several months, actually, we're going to be offering a number of um, coffee chats and trainings focused on kind of understanding the, those pieces of what CORE is. And we have these <clears throat> statements here, the, the mission, the vision uh, that were developed in partnership with a lot of different people that provided input and, and helped us um, craft this language that really centers equity. So it's a constant reminder that uh, about our why, that we are really trying to make sure that all people in our community have these equitable opportunities to thrive. And so when we talk about uh, equitable health and, and well-being, we mean that um, throughout the lifespan, that people's opportunities and life outcomes aren't predictable for better or for worse by things like race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, immigration status, language, or any of those other um, aspects of diversity. And oftentimes we refer to that as, as equity dimensions. And so when we think about what it takes to create these core conditions for health and well-being, uh, not only is equity at the center of that, but a big part of that is the ability to connect people to resources that match their individual needs without placing the burden of making those connections on people who need those resources. Um, and so that means that those of us that have services and resources to offer really have to work together to find ways to communicate effectively, consistently, and oftentimes quickly with each other so that we're not the ones that are creating or adding to the barriers that people might experience when they're trying to access services. So we like to think of the communication things like referral processes, warm handoffs between service providers. Uh, we like to think of those as all those lines that connect the core conditions. Right now we're showing them as dotted lines, but the idea is that the more communication, the more lines there are, the stronger or more effective the communication and relationships are, the thicker and stronger those lines are. And so ideally we'd wanna see lots of lines connecting all these dots um, and sometimes we, we think of that as, you know, weaving together the uh, social safety net or, um, or supports. And so think of like lots and lots of, of strands and connections here that we'd want to see. And so today we're here to learn more about or hear updates about a tool to help local service providers connect those dots called Unite Us. So again, we're really pleased to have both Heather and Ellen joining us today. And just another word before we turn it over here, um, some of you may know that we offer these things like core coffee chats, sometimes longer core conversations, sometimes really specific uh, topics and trainings as part of the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact. So think of the Core Institute as, a, as an umbrella or a container for all types of learning opportunities, where again, we're trying to create these places and spaces for people from nonprofits and public agencies, uh, grassroots groups. Uh, you know, we hope to see more of the business community also join some of these. So again, look at how we might uh, work together uh, to achieve that collective vision and mission that we've set out for CORE. 
So again, I, uh, Nicole and I are really pleased to have Ellen and Heather here. They're each going to share a little bit uh, different pieces of Unite Us to help us understand what it is, how it's currently being used in our community. I believe we also have a special guest with us today, Daisy Trujillo from Salud para la Gente, uh, that is actively using Unite Us. And so we'll get to hear not just about the platform, kind of theoretically how it's meant to be used, but we get to hear a real life example of, of how it's being used. So I'm going to turn it over right now to Ellen to share an overview. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for having me here in Santa Cruz to talk a little bit more about um, Unite Us. And I'm going to provide just kind of a general frame and update for those of you who are familiar or are using Unite Us. And then Heather, uh, my local partner, is going to delve into a little bit more depth about what's happening in Santa Cruz specifically. And we are very excited to have Daisy with us. And thank you, Daisy. Uh, so we're a trio. We'd love this to be interactive. And uh, let's get going. We thought we would start uh, with a poll uh, to get a sense of how familiar people are with Unite Us at this point. And Ellen, because the poll won't show on the recording, do you mind if I read the question and response. No, go for well. it. Go the question is, it. how familiar are you with Unite Us? And the choices are, never heard of it, I've attended a previous information session, or I'm registered but haven't used Unite Us, or I'm actively using Unite Us to send and receive referrals. Great. So I think we'll end the poll now. I think we got a good sense of uh, who's in the room. And uh, Let's see, I can share the results. It looks like most folks have had a little bit of background on us. Uh, a few are registered and a few are, are actively using it. And there are five people who've never heard of it. So that is why we're here, is to just uh, kind of get everyone on the same page. So I am going to share my screen. And uh, just introduce myself really quickly. I'm uh, Ellen Dactar, and as Nicole mentioned, I'm a senior community engagement manager with Unite Us, who's working in Santa Cruz. And my role at Unite Us is to partner with community organizations to build meaningful networks in a way that make, makes sense to the local community. And just for background, most of my team is social workers. We come from the communities we're working in. Uh, my background is 30 years of trying to coordinate services uh, for young children uh, for public agencies in Alameda County and San Francisco County. And uh, we've all wanted this tool for a really long time and uh, have been working towards data-driven uh, planning for communities. So we're uh, enthusiastic supporters. So what we're talking about, uh, oh, and just before I get started, let me say uh, the, trans, uh, the presentation is translated into English and Spanish, and I'm going to be showing the Spanish language slides. Uh, and hopefully those of you um, who understand, you know, speak the English part of it uh, can follow me uh, just kind of orally and, uh, and then you will receive the presentation afterwards as well. But they're just a few slides and they're kind of basic. Uh, we're talking about a new model of care uh, that's being driven by the Santa Cruz community and communities across uh, California and the United States. We're uh, live in most California counties with uh, the most population right now. We just added Santa Clara last week and um, we'll be adding San Diego later next year and San Francisco and San Mateo in February. And when, a lot, when other people, many people think of health, 
they think of uh, healthcare being clinical. And Unite Us was founded with the idea that health really lives in the community. And because we're all serving the same community, we need to be at the same table. And our model is that healthcare partners recognize the intricate link between health and social care and allow for free access to community-based organizations, knowing that if we have better coordination, we're gonna have better health outcomes. So currently when we refer a client to services at another organization, I think many of you may find it's hard to know whether they receive those services and how it went. And uh, we see this across all different types of agencies that when we're trying to support an individual, some are referred to government programs, some are referred to community programs or health programs, and we really don't know what happens when they leave our four walls. And using Unite Us, uh, we are able to know what happens with our referrals. Um, most of our referrals are made agency to agency to take that burden off the individual, but we do have uh, the ability to have web links for individuals to self-refer to services. And um, what you see on this slide is a real world example of a housing agency that you not used Unite Us to prove just how big of an impact they were having on their clients' well-being beyond the direct housing services they provided. And using Unite Us, uh, this organization is able to tell their funders that they've received over 1,200 referrals. Some were individuals and some were from other organizations. They're able to show the percentage of their own services, um, their rental and mortgage payment assistance needs, uh, and eviction prevention cases that they're able to close. And then they referred the same clients to network partners to meet their co-occurring needs for food, legal, and utility assistance services. And they can show using um, this technology that over 87% of the food needs were resolved, for example. And the housing agency would likely have made referrals for their clients either way, but it would have taken a lot longer to find the right resources. And they wouldn't actually know if their clients ever got the help they needed. Uh, so we're talking about way more than referrals. Uh, and Unite Us has partnered with communities in over 44 states to build coordinated care networks. And uh, the core focus is really coordination where every organization, healthcare and community organization is connected together around the clients in need. And we can all see what happens when we coordinate and then use that reporting to drive funding. So here's another example um, from real communities across the United States that have come together to do this work. And we can see change at the individual level uh, for staff and clients. So we know that uh, clients are served more quickly and that staff also is able to save time because they're not going through outdated service directories or calling wrong numbers. Um, one agency in Pittsburgh reported that Unite Us saved them 15 hours per week per staff member because their case managers weren't having to do that kind of inefficient work. Um, secondly, we're getting people connected to the right services faster, and this improves the client experience drastically. This is person-centered care. Clients aren't having to tell their story multiple times or carry the burden of reaching out to all the organizations on a sheet of paper trying to get their needs met. And then um, finally, we're able to give you real-time data that you can use for your own planning or community, uh, agency planning, community planning, or um, discussions with funders. And uh, 
one agency was able to show, for example, that it was um, meeting 89%, uh, its staff efficiency was improved by 89%, and then they used that with our funders. So now I'm going to show you a quick snapshot of who's using the network in Santa Cruz. Heather's going to go into more depth on this. I'm just going to mention that we do have um, these free data visualization tools for you for organizations that send or receive five referrals. And I can show you a little peek and a demo after this, um, after the other presentations. Hopefully we'll have some time and I can show you a demo of what it's like to use the network and then a peek at these dashboards so that we'll show you things like your top needs and your co-occurring needs for the referrals uh, for the clients you're working with. And it summarizes your referrals uh, overall and the trends. Um, so I'll show you that later. And really uh, just a couple more things in closing. Uh, we're supporting community transformation work, uh, like this work happening in Santa Cruz and referrals aren't the end point, they're the starting point. And we see this work happening in phases, um, starting with how do we get people connected to services, but uh, then you know, using the results and the data to reflect on what needs to be um, changed with our services. And then finally, uh, working towards a vision and reality of uh, payments for community-based organizations and new ways of supporting um, funding flowing from uh, funders to community. Finally, I'll just talk about our data, data privacy, which is at the forefront of everything we do. Uh, the Unite Us platform is HIPAA and FERPA compliant, and um, the technology adheres to the strictest federal privacy regu regulations, um, and the certification uh, for that is called High Trust, and uh, sensitive organizations such as those working with domestic violence and legal uh, uh, populations have additional layers of protection built in. So it's safe and they've been using our network for years. And uh, with that, I'm just going to uh, put a little link in the chat for you um, to see you know, if you're interested in learning more so I can contact you and then I am going to uh, stop sharing and hand it back to Heather. And uh, have there been questions in the chat or anything anyone wants to check in about before we go on with the presentation? Not yet, I think you're, you're good to continue. Great, so Heather, take it away. All right, thank you, Ellen. And Good morning, Santa Cruz, buenos dias. It is such a pleasure to be with you all here today. Uh, I wanna first and foremost thank the core team for allowing us this time with you all. Uh, I was recognizing on my video tile that one of my son's uh, Halloween costumes is in the background. So I wanna bring it to you just so we can have a little fun. Um, he is uh, a child coming out of an alien, I just think it's a little silly. And at times, you know, when we're using our brains, we need to have some laughter and fun. Um, I also just want to acknowledge that there are blue skies outside my windows, and I am very grateful. I live in Ben Lomond and uh, Boulder Creek. Lots of families have been evacuated. Um, and so uh, I'm grateful that my children are back in school. And uh, I think we'll get started. Let me share my screen. Oops, that's not fun to look at. All right. So what are we here to talk about today? Right? Our community referral, our roadmap for social services. I'd like to first start off by thanking Santa Cruz Health Information Organization, which of course is known as SHIO. Uh, this organization actually houses our local health information exchange, 
which is very unique. And I also want to share this slide just to share that Together We Care is an ecosystem of two tools. It consists of Activate Care and Unite Us. And all of this to say that this is our future because we are transitioning to CalAIM. And I was not here today to talk to you all about CalAIM, but I do want to educate what CalAIM stands for because part of our job is learning about social determinants of health is to define CalAIM, which stands for Cal for California, and then AIM is Advancing and Innovating Medi-Cal. I just want to let you know that CalAIM is a five-year initiative and plan through the Department of Healthcare Services. And its motivation is to improve quality of life and health outcomes across the Medi-Cal program. I also want to let you know that the Together We Care ecosystem is uh, remarkable and builds on the outcomes from whole person care dollars. Now, this is the current partners that are here in the Unite Us Santa Cruz network. Every time I share this slide, it has different numbers at the top. So we have about 56 organizations, 85 programs, and more than 212 users on the network. And I also just wanna pause and uh, acknowledge 211 Helpline and the United Way of Santa Cruz. Um, they have been instrumental in providing services for CZU uh, fire resources, uh, coronavirus information, COVID-19 tenant defense. And um, we really see Unite Us and 211 Santa Cruz in harmony and in synergy. And I wanna describe the difference because I get asked this often. So uh, 211 Santa Cruz is really public facing. We make the call, we get the services. And United, uh, the Unite Us platform is a social services referral platform, closed loop, bi-directional, and it's really for the workforce, the folks like you and I that are serving our beloved community. Now, one thing's clear, uh, 211 Santa Cruz and the Unite Us platform, uh, we have a very clear joint vision um, for our community. We're better together and there are meetings underway to really understand what the relationship will be between Unite Us platform and 211 Santa Cruz. All to say that we're excited for the future and we recognize our shared goals of increasing supports and services. So you saw that last slide and it had a lot of information about our current partners in our Santa Cruz network. And that's great. That's about 10 months worth of work. And now HIP, Health Improvement Partnership, Santa Cruz Health Information Organization, SHIO and UU, unite us, we're pivoting our focus on not so much onboarding, but getting folks to use the system. And we recognize that this change in workflow is tough. So we have broken it down into steps, and now we are acting as your program manager, as your people and team to support in this change and this change in workflow, all to say that the first steps are really understanding what are the ways existing right now in your orgs on who is making referrals, who is sending them, who is accepting them, and who do you work with, right? So what's your history of working together? I know that we've heard from Bahara Valley Loaves and Fishes, Ashley Bridges, program director, I believe executive director. She has the liberty of being able to walk over to some of the partners 
uh, I believe it's community action board. And so they do referrals literally by walking or making a phone call or a text. And so we recognize that that's the first step that we as a team wanna help y'all identify. How are you currently making referrals today? And who is the generator of the referral and who is the receiver? Another thing we've learned along the way, um, and now that we're focusing on adoption or utilization or using Unite Us, is that we like to sit down with the folks in the organization who are making the decisions, right? And we want to hear from those decision-making folks, uh, which staff do they really think are going to be most suitable to come and be trained in Unite Us? and to really understand their schedules. You know, are they working predominantly and offering their direct services in the evening, in the morning, um, on the weekend, et cetera. And then we can really, as a team, come together and figure out how do we schedule these meetings so that we can really hold and support during this change in workflow. And we also recognize that there are gonna be uh, speed bumps, if you will, or bumps in the road, or maybe even a barrier. But what's really cool is that we had this uh, wonderful meeting uh, last week with, uh, on Friday, yes, on the 22nd, with Community Bridges, one of the largest direct service providers in our beloved community. And we sat down with the Family Resource Collective, the four Family Resource Centers, and the Program Manager, and first five uh, triple P Santa Cruz. And we in live time, what's kind of cool, right? We're all in virtual environments. We could log in to the platform and you know, see things, uh, send the first referral, accept the, fir the first referral. And we really believe that breaking it down into steps is how we're gonna have success. Again, I wanna let you know, uh, you have a lot of support. And this support is what will lead to change and success. So you have a program manager in your organization. You wanna understand, um, again, who in-house is sending your referral? And you all are gonna hear after me from Daisy at Salud para la Gente. And she has become such a champion and working within Together We Care ecosystem working within Unite Us, within Activate Care. And I didn't do a very good job of describing the differences of Activate Care and Unite Us. So let me do that real quick. And not everyone's gonna use Activate Care. So that's why I think it's worth this little pause. Activate Care is really for case management or in case care, enhanced care management or enhanced case management. And Unite Us, again, is for social service referrals. So not everybody is going to work in both Activate Care and Unite Us. But I hope I made that clear that Unite Us is really for the social service referrals. And it's bi-directional and it's closed loop. So, okay, going back to the, the players for success that you currently have. Uh, we also like to identify internally, do you have technology support? Do you have someone in-house who is responsible for your technology tools? And if you do, they are also included in the program implementation and the program launch to sending and receiving first referrals and having success. All right, so again, you have SHIO, Santa Cruz Health Information Organization, Community Engagement Specialist, Michelle Dennis. You have myself. Health Improvement Partnership Program Manager. You have Justin Medrano, who is here, who is also assisting uh, HIP and working with all of you all and scheduling. Sometimes we find it easiest just to do a doodle poll when we have large staffs in multiple locations to get together. But that's okay, because that's on us. HIP is here to serve you and to schedule the training environment, the demo environment. We work, of course, with Unite Us is going to be in the room, and all to say that success, you've started the process, you will be able to adopt and utilize a new tech tool. All right, so what's your next steps? If you're interested, let us know. 
We will help schedule the kickoff meetings. They can be virtual or in person. We will review the criteria that will lead to becoming best practices for our community. So that's pretty pioneering and revolutionary. We'll also be able to discern what success looks like for you all. And it's gonna be individual and we're gonna customize this. We'll be able to create flow charts of the referral process because we all need visual depictions of what we're doing. And we'll be able to introduce our project planning support. We at HIP will help scheduling these meetings we also recommend that once you're on your way, that we don't want to not hear from you anymore. So it's really important that we continue to have partner check-ins. And we will schedule these 15 to 30 minute brief partner check-ins just so that we can identify any hiccups along the way and assign next steps within the project timeline. And of course, if there's a need, a next meeting. So. What I want to say is that we're going to keep the focus. We're going to do this bite size. We're going to think a snowball effect. And um, we're not going to make any kind of information sharing needs, um, you know, any kind of large problems. We don't have to solve these yet. We just want to test the system. We just want to send or receive our first referral and really normalize this change in workflow. All to say this is our beginning, our generic sort of visual depiction of a community referral. Of course, once we work with you individually, we will fill this out and customize it with people's names. Um, I also wanna do a shout out. I believe I saw Habiba Rotter here in the room. We're also working with Encompass currently for this adoption model. And they, as we all know, is also one of the largest direct service providers. And uh, I believe Habiba has informed us that she is doing sort of a community uh, listening tour for the referral map in Encompass, and there are more than 40 programs, all to say that we feel really confident that we have identified recently some uh, potential use case scenarios for referrals. Uh, we see a need for Salud para la gente. I know there, I believe Daisy will communicate next. Thank you, Daisy, in advance. Already sending referrals for Pajara Valley Lobes and Fishes, Second Harvest Food Bank, all food assistance. Um, also working with First Five Santa Cruz Triple P and the Community Bridges Family Resource Centers uh, to engage for positive parenting classes. Uh, Santa Cruz Community Health and the Healthy Steps staff. We've uncovered that them being able to send referrals for Encompass Early Head Start or Head Start, very important. Okay, that is the end of my slideshow. I will stop sharing. And Daisy, um, may we please have your learned experience and sharing of what, what has been uh, your experience with UNITA. And thank you in advance. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, Heather, I've been, it's been an honor. I am very grateful for this program. Um, it's been a learning tool as well. So um, it's all about closing the loop. I work for Salud Para La Gente. I work in the Community Health Services Department. I'm a Community Health Services Educator. So for me, this helped in a sense of um, help closing the loop with my patients, making sure that the consents are being signed, making sure that um, an easy text could just be sent automatically to, through their iPhone. Um, also, if I get to forget, because that's going to happen eventually, I'm not perfect. I'm also learning as I'm going. Um, guess what? United sends us reminders, you know, hey, follow up with this patient. Um, you know, it's just these little quick reminders for me to be like, okay, let me go back and let me follow up with the patient. And it's within working and within my own, you know, email environment here at Salud. It's been helpful for me. It's been helpful just to hear also other um, patients that I have helped with that it really helped them out. Even when it came down to food insecurity, depending on where they're at, you, you know, it, it doesn't have to be 
um, specifically in their home. They just say they're homeless and they need something super close by, like, like loaves and fishes or or a food bank. And, you know, they'll if most of our population already have smartphones. So if we're able just to go ahead and submit that text message and get the consent um, and, you know, just put their phone number in, they'll automatically receive that. And to them, it's a very, very helpful tool as well um, as it is for us. And obviously, all this is documented. All of this is in the system. And like, I, like I'm telling you right now, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm learning as I'm going. Um, but those reminders are so helpful. They've been so helpful for me where it came down to, oh, this patient hasn't completed the consent form. So then guess what? There I go back and I... Um, go into, I use active care. So, and it automatically takes me into Unitas, which the thing is right, right now I'm multitasking from the EHR to active care. So imagine just the fact that I don't have to multitask once, you know, the platform of Unitas, when I hit referrals, it just automatically pops in that patient there and I don't have to add any more information in the system because it already came from active care. So I don't have to worry about if I forgot something because gener it generates it right away. It takes a couple of seconds, but it gets there. So to me, that was very helpful, just the fact that I don't have to do an extra step, you know, in my workflow. As it is, we all are busy and we all have this busy schedules. So to me, just this technology and the, the fact that it's more advanced than it, it was back then, it's, yes, it's something different. Yes, it's going to be a challenge, but no one is perfect. And we learn from this at, as we, I could go back because I used to do charting and that was even worse. And now that we're electronic, it's like, wow, it's like a big mind blowing. So to me, just the fact that I'm able to use Unitas and be able to get consent, be able to send text messages. And guess what? I forgot something. So I'm sending, uh, they're sending me an email. They have an awesome as well um, support group. I've been supported um, by, um, I'm going to say Christine. Um, she's been helping me a lot and not just only her, but there's also other, um, you get the help desk right then and there when you're in the platform. They'll let you know whether you're stuck or whether you need help um, registering, even just starting a referral. They'll go ahead and send you the steps. Even if you're not in active care, they'll go ahead and let you know, this is how you go through this step. So for me, um, that was very helpful. And it made me realize that, okay, now I could close the loop. So not having my patient wondering, did he, this patient receive the care that the patient needed? made me realize, you know what, um, this is awesome. Like I get excited. So it's kind of like, okay, well, I help this patient out now. Who's next? And um, it's going to take work, it, you know, patience. That's one of the things, but um, it's something new. So it's worth it. And um, thank you so much. Can you talk a little bit about, have you had to teach other staff yet? Oh, yeah. Or you're probably, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's one of my um, recent, um, as I was talking to Heather yesterday, <laughs> that was one of my recent challenges. So um, my uh, group, well, my manager and my supervisor wanted me to um, teach my staff. And it's just a, you know, it's not a big number, but uh, I guess it was it was a challenge, obviously, because you're in front of your own colleagues. But it was, it's not as tough. It's not that hard. It's, it is, you know, you have to learn the basics. So the thing is, you have to be able to teach them. But this comes from your own learning experience as well. So it becomes even easier just to teach them. So it's a little bit more of, okay, how long did the, like I told Heather yesterday, how long did the consents last? Would you know? And she's like, you know what? That's a good question. I'm going to talk to Shayo about it. So it's kind of like, okay. <laughs> so we're all learning and we're all being in the same. So don't feel intimidated. Don't feel like, and this is a stupid, like a dumb question. Sorry. You know, don't feel like that. There's no dumb questions. Just go ahead and be out and be, be yourself. Learn 
through the process and and no one's perfect you know but you're just trying to be better than you were before so to me this was a a, a great tool my coworkers lo loved it they even asked me they'll ask me questions here and there they're not as active users as i am because they started with me first um but now they'll say hey can you um send a text message to this person because he needs this type of information and i'll be like yeah sure give me the number and um i'll just go ahead it's not it's, i don't need to do a consent at that moment because he just wants something directly sent to his phone at that very moment because he needs it so it to me it was like okay here i'll go ahead just give me the number and then the she and then i'm all did the person received it yeah she did she received it thank you so it's like it's very easy and it's within us helping our own co-workers helping our community and just being able to grow so to me it's been it's been an honor thank you heather for having me here and i really appreciate the fact that um you know we're just all about helping the community and trying to you know just grow and learn at the same time yeah and thank you daisy because of your experience and sharing it you know you're normalizing our ability to really offer more services right and to really improve quality of life mm -hmm. and health outcomes and that's what we're all about right that's why we go into the nonprofit, into the mission driven industries because we love and we want better. So better together. And thank you so very much. And thanks, salute para la gente. And thank you, Daisy, for training staff and for You're normalizing <laughs> text messages. Like, love it. Yeah, no, yeah. And it's good for grants. So um, that's one of the, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So I'm adding more to it. Uh, my supervisor uh, just called me. Well, she's my manager. She's like, hey, Daisy, can you send me a consent form? How it looks like? I'm like, sure. Just give me your number. So it's kind of like for her to use it for her upcoming grants. So it was, it was helpful. So yeah. And I'm still learning. So, you know, now I need to ask Shayo that question. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be emailing Michelle Dennis right now. And I think we're, we have a couple of minutes if, if people want to transition and just see the demo environment from Ellen Dektar. Um, the last thing I'll say about those reports, Daisy, thank you for reminding me is we might have a, a part two coffee chat because these um, Unite Us Insights, uh, I, I have permissions in the database and all these health equity reports are you can get lost in there. I mean, yeah. it is impressive and very helpful information. So thank you again, Daisy. You're welcome. Champion. Anytime. And we have just a couple of minutes left. And so we wanted to do a couple things with you. Um, Nicole, do you mind bringing up this, that last slide again so we can share some information about upcoming events? We also have our feedback poll that we'd love to have you fill out about uh, today's event. And um, I'm going to post in the chat some of the actual registration links for some of our upcoming core events. So um, we are we do have a couple coffee chats scheduled. One of them is on a different day of the week than our usual time on Monday, November 8th from 9.30 to 11. We're going to do a coffee chat on an introduction to collective impact. Um, some of you might be familiar with that concept, might be new to some of you. Some of you are aware that the county and city of Santa Cruz will be releasing their next request for proposals in November, early to mid-November. Uh, the concept of collective impact is going to be a key piece of that. And so we're trying to plan some um, core sessions, trainings, informational sessions to help people understand some of those key concepts that you'll see up here in that core RFP. So. If you're interested in either just learning more about the concept of collective impact and how it can apply in our community, we encourage you to register for that for Coffee Chat. Um, we do wanna let people know that on Tuesday, November 9th, the um, county and city will present to the Board of Supervisors and the city council on the actual core RFP and get their approval to release it. It'll be uh, probably about a week later that it'll be officially released. So if you're interested in listening in on that, providing any public comment, we'll try to make sure everyone has uh, more specific information as, you know, we don't know the times of those presentations, but we'll try to send reminders and information about that. 
And then the following week, we'll hold a coffee chat during our regular time, but for a slightly longer length on exploring the core conditions for health and well-being. Again, that will be a central component of the core RFP, identifying how the programs and services that you offer support or align with uh, one or more of the core conditions. And then we're, uh, we'll be re releasing a fuller schedule for the rest of November, December, even into January uh, for training and, and technical assistance events that are really geared towards helping people um, prepare their proposals, their applications for the core RFP, which will be due in early February. So we'll send all this out again by email, but wanted to give you all a heads up now and hope to see you at uh, future events. So thanks so much for joining us today. And thank you, Ellen and Heather and Daisy for joining us and sharing all this information. And thank you, Stella and Gisela for the translation and interpretation.